So this week we've been looking at happiness at work. I think I was looking at some of the stuff Bernie had covered and they're all topics close to my heart. Um, this, this concept of uh, connecting with gratitude at work. You know, we have this negativity bias and, um, you know, really this is a way of uh, sort of tipping the, the, the balance of that towards the more positive. So Roy Baumeister, very eminent psychologist, was the first to really put forward this idea of this negativity bias that it's much better for our survival to focus on threats than it is um, to, to, you know, focus on the positive. So we have to offset that some way at work. Then there's this, this connection with meaning and purpose and social connections. And that really, for me, is, is the key uh, for resilience and also for happiness at work. And um, they're two important concepts. And I think Bernie's covered that. Um, and then we're going to look at, we're going to add to that, this concept of flow, which might have come up a little bit. We've certainly talked about it before. I think most people will have, have a kind of a bit of an awareness of flow. You almost certainly have experienced it in your life. Pretty much everyone has had moments of flow and actually it's a spectrum. So even if you haven't had deep flow, you'll have had some level of, of flow and I'll d describe it and, and, and talk about it in a minute. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's common in sports. People talk about being in the zone. There's, there's lots of different uh, phrases for this. And, you know, musicians, creatives, you know, there, there's lots of examples of flow. And I, I hopefully you're all, you've all got your own uh, personal experience to sort of think about. And what we want to do is access that at work more, really. You know, when this is a funny paradox. So at least in this country, when <clears throat> people are asked about uh, happiness, they, they'll they often report, you know, well, actually, I'll do it the other way around. So there's something culturally that people in our culture often complain about their work. You know, if you've, if you've worked in offices, just going on Monday morning and get that, that vibe that's often there, you know, people will often be just focused on the holiday. Not everyone, you know, a lot of people are in rewarding work, but there can be a kind of cultural thing to, to complain about work, um, even if it's kind of jokey. But actually, the research shows that, that the most high levels of flow are in our work life. So people actually, you know, find their work life deeply engaging and, and um, <clears throat> rewarding and enjoyable. We're just not always programmed to kind of say that and to talk like that. You know, it's much easier to say, oh, yeah, I'm just waiting for the weekend or, God, that weekend went so quick. Oh, I can't wait for the holiday. Um and actually, you know, our work can be this this place for deep flow. So, so what is flow? So, uh, Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi. It's a hard name to say. Sometimes I get it right, but uh, today I'm struggling with it. He's a Hungarian psychologist, one of the, the forefathers of positive psychology, and yeah, fascinating guy. And he has really studied this topic in depth for for i think it's maybe a, it's a couple of decades it might even be longer now he's been working on this um and he's studied and interviewed and he's done this um uh what they basically they give people a a, a buzzer or or a alert system and then they check in with them and they get them to give their subjective experience so it's sort of experience sampling um to study flow to to see how um yeah yeah it is a great ted talk um and um, yeah, so he, he studied this in every discipline you can imagine and kind of got into the, the, the deep level of it. He, he, he conceptualizes it um, in, in a certain way. And then I pulled out some of the ideas and slightly switched the order of the way it's conceptualized, because I think some of them are, are actions we can take, some of the definition of actions we take, and some of them are, some of it is outcome. Um, so really, the way I look at flow is, is that we have to be focused. Um, this focus has to be effortless and deep. So it's not like stressed and tense. It's very hard to get into flow if you're really tight and stressed and worried. It's a kind of looser, uh, you know, that's why, you know, uh, athletes will kind of emphasize that balance between concentration and relaxation. And, and you find that in, in everything. You know, there are samurai classic texts that, that describe this quality and swordsmanship of, of kind of being focused and relaxed. And you see it across everything. It's this sort of balance of those qualities. 
Um, then the task needs to be challenging, so it can't be too easy. Although I would debate this one because I think if your concentration is high enough, you can get into flow, you know, just looking at nature, which isn't particularly challenging. Um, but, but generally, we're going to put ourselves more in flow if, if the task is challenging, but it's within our competency. So it's not too challenging that it becomes stressful. It's more like deliberate practice that we talked about before. Um, <clears throat> This, we're at the edge of our skill level. It's challenging, but we, we have some mastery over it. Um, so there's this sense of control. Then we need clear goals. So we've talked about goals a lot, but we need clear goals and feedback on them. And then this is the bit where I think the next two are outcomes. So then we lose a sense of time or the sense of time changes. It either speeds up, slows down, kind of does a bit of both often. Um, and, and the sense of self disappears. So you're less self-focused, less self-conscious. So you're not so judging and appraising how you're doing, thinking about yourself. You know, this default mode network, which is, is down the midline of the brain, which is a mixture of things. It's also imagination and creativity related. But one part of it is um, a, a very self-focused and very kind of ruminative going over narratives about your life and often very threat focused. So you, you know, you, you might experience this yourself at times when you, you're not doing anything, your mind goes on to the issues and the problems in your life. And that that's one aspect of the default mode network. So when we're in flow, we're in the task engaged network and that one shuts down. So we become really, really focused and we lose the sense of self. And sometimes that can be completely, you know, it's only after the experience, you sort of come back online and you're like, wow that was amazing but that's another quality at the time people don't report high levels of emotion when they're in flow it's only when you come out of it afterwards you go wow that was deeply rewarding and engaging um there's a, a great mindfulness coach george mumford who he worked with um chicago bulls at the height of their success and many other sports teams um, american sports teams and, and he has said that mindfulness kind of prepares us and gets us ready for flow. So they're different things. Mindfulness is a bit more, there is awareness of yourself. I mean, mindfulness is a whole group of skills. One version of it is um, that you also have awareness of how you're thinking and feeling. So there's internal awareness and external awareness. So it's a bit different to flow, but the qualities of concentration and what we, we train in mindfulness set us up to get into flow. Um, and, and you can get into flow in mindfulness, certainly on retreats. I've had experiences where you're doing, you know, the most simple thing and you just get deeply into, you know, mindfulness of breathing or whatever it might be. And an hour goes past in two minutes and, you know, you lose sense of self. So you certainly can get it. You know, they're, they're all related. They're kind of like cousins. You know, I think of gratitude and flow and savoring and mindfulness. They're all related to skills, really. And they're not as distinct as they sound. Um, so that that's some ideas there. We're going to think about how we get this in work. We're going to do a quick practice around this. We're going to use mindfulness of breathing. So any simple mindfulness technique will help with the concentration part, with the, the, the focus part and the effortless deep concentration. So the more we practice noticing our wandering mind and bringing it back, refocusing, training up curiosity so we're really engaged in in a mindfulness practice the more we can transfer that into other areas of our life like our work and get into flow um so just sitting comfortably and we're going to do a very short practice here one one i like um to kind of uh demonstrate this concept um we're going to do some mindful breathing and then we're going to really tune in on just one breath um, and, and really become focused with one breath um, so sitting comfortably, if for any reason you, you're not so fond of mindfulness of breathing, you can use sound, you can use sensation, you can use another focus. Uh, but for convenience, we're going to use the breath. So sitting comfortably, finding that posture, closing your eyes and relaxing your body. So from head to toe, just softening the major muscle groups, the head, shoulders and arms, the chest, abdomen, back, legs. So just a quick scan through and relaxation. And then bring in your attention to your breathing and just starting to feel the sensation of the breath. It can be at the nose, the chest, the abdomen, or like the whole flow of the breath. You can work with any of those 
really just wherever you feel the breath most clearly. And as you start to tune into the breath, bring this curious attention. So you're looking for novelty, detail, change. Like you've never practiced with the breath before, like you're just looking at it for the first time. What is it like to breathe? What's going on there in the physical sensations? You know, the coolness, the warmness, the pressure, the release, the tingling, the um, changes in sensation moment to moment, just following those. And as your mind wanders off or thoughts come up, just acknowledge that, come back to the breath. And then in a moment, we're going to just go for one breath. So just staying focused with one breath. So how we're going to do that is just become focused at the start of the breath, the middle of the in-breath, the end of the in-breath, any pause. And then the beginning of the out-breath, middle of the out-breath, and then the out end of the out-breath and any pause. So really each stage of the in-breath and the out-breath, we're staying focused with. So in your own time, just taking one breath like that. And another. And you could obviously continue like this. So if we break it up into just staying focused in this moment, don't worry about the, the next one or the one after that, then we can start to get more focused. Even in one breath, your mind might have wandered or thoughts might have been there in the background. That's okay as well. You know, we're wanting to be aware of that. We can train focus and awareness with all of that going on. But this is just a nice way of, of showing some aspects of flow with mindfulness of breathing. So you can open your eyes now. Um, you know, so we, we started to get focused. We were hopefully effortless and kind of relaxed in that focus. You know, we softened the body. That's a good way to relax the focus. And um, the task is challenging. It's hard to stay with the breath as simple as, it's, as it sounds. It's really difficult for most people. Um, uh, but we have some control. We can choose to do it. We can work it. We had some clear goals in that single breath. So to be focused at the beginning, middle and end, big beginning and middle and end of the breath and the immediate feedback, you know, if you're not focused or not. Um, and so how do we translate this at, at work? So I've got some ideas about this. Start to think about your work tasks today. And are there any tasks that you could kind of cultivate flow? Now, one thing to acknowledge is the harder we try and get into the flow, probably the less likely we are to do it. You see this in sports. You hear about people choking and they have other phrases for it. So it's when we try too hard, we're, we're not going to get this either. So that's where the effortless relaxing part comes in. And we can only set up the qualities for uh, the, the ca characteristics for flow and, and then allow it to happen if it's going to happen. All we can do is, is, is really, you know, make sure that we're, we're skilled at the task and then, um, you know, engage in it fully. They're the two key things. Skills are up to the task and then engage in it fully. If the skills aren't up to the task, then deliberate practice. Um, so think about something that's challenging in your work. It's the edge of your, your skill and it could be anything. It can be creative problem solving to communication to um, you know, working to a deadline, all of these sorts of things, you know, new challenges, new goals, all of them can work for this. And you probably get it in deadline time, at, at least at part, because there are clear goals, there's pressure on you, there's time versus quality. So know your goals for the task. When you're doing a task, have a clear sense of what you're trying to achieve and, and what's going on there. Link it back to meaning and purpose and values. Why? You know, that's always useful as well. Um, but some simple ideas here, here are actually just to schedule time into time box. I'm going to work on this task for this length of time and then work these qualities of speed and quality, balancing those. So I'm going to work as hard and do as much as I can in this time, but it's going to be high quality. So we're at the edge of our skill level. That's one of the simplest ways to get into flow. If you balance those, you know, it's hard if we're working 
kind of slowly and not really going for it. But if we're trying too fast and losing quality, we won't get it either. So that could be one, you know, having goals around listening and, and retaining information and being really focused there in communication, you know, solution goals, if we're problem solving, what are we trying to come up with? Um, you know, there's lots of ways of setting the goals. Probably the simplest is speed and quality and, and kind of matching those. Keep working on focus, refocusing when you get distracted, acknowledging, noticing, unhooking from worry, coming back. Relax, you know, from time to time throughout the day, just check in and relax the body, soften the shoulders, you know, your breathing, make sure you're not holding your breath and you're not tense. So we soften the body from time to time and that will help with a relaxed focus and and don't force this you know just set up these qualities and then it'll happen from time to time and it's a spectrum so sometimes we're really deeply in flow and sometimes we're just a little bit in flow and time speeds up a little bit or changes a little bit so you know there are whole varying degrees of this and generally the deeper we get into it the more fulfilled we feel and you know the, the higher it experience and less you know things like anxiety and, and depression and things like that drop away more in flow as well so it's really helpful to work on this if we're struggling at these stressful times as well